Hi, I'm Chris Lord, uh, a software developer at Galia on the WebKit team. Over the last couple of years, we've been working on implementing off-screen canvas in WebKit, primarily targeting WPE and GTK backends, uh, and this work has reached a near complete state earlier this year. So I'm going to talk a bit about what the last phase of implementation looked like from a technical perspective, and then I'll finish off with a quick demo. So the implementation can be roughly broken down into six phases. Uh, 2D canvas context in workers, basic CSS color passing in workers, asynchronous off-screen canvas composition, full CSS color passing in workers, CSS font face passing in workers, and font loading in workers. A lot of stuff in workers. Um, the majority of the work went into the latter half of these phases, which were all completed in the first half of 2021, that's this year. Uh, with both CSS passing and font usage in workers being the major obstacles. Uh, and these are the tasks that I'm going to focus on uh, for this talk. So WebKit's CSS passing relied heavily on a singleton CSS value pool for performance. And while you could make this thread safe with the introduction of mutexes, uh, this is a very hot area of code that needs to remain fast. The solution for this in the end was mostly to avoid using it at all. Uh, so using CSS values allows us to provide a CSS object model uh, and retrieve past validated CSS. Off-screen canvas, however, doesn't need that functionality. It only needs the final computed values. Uh, so a new path has been added to CSS parsing where the various CSS parsing functions now have what we call raw equivalents. Uh, that pass the CSS and just give you the result without maintaining the information needed to support a CSS object model. Uh, this isn't unique to off-screen Canvas, however. Uh, canvas can also use this path, uh, and it, indeed it's been made to do so, uh, to, to mainly to add extra testing uh, and increase the resilience to breakage uh, for, those, for these new code paths. Um, it could be the subject of future performance work uh, to use these functions more frequently as well, so in situations where only the computed values are necessary. Oh, that's going ahead. Uh, this was initially done for colors and then gradually for various other properties until font face declarations could be passed entirely without CSS values. Uh, at this point, uh, we had full color passing off of the main thread and font, font strings could be passed, but fonts themselves were still only usable on the main thread. Uh, this is because font cache, which also orchestrates the font loading process, was not thread safe. So making fonts safe to use uh, off the main thread involved removal of the assumption of the safety of the font cache and CSS value pool singletons. So previously they were used uh, anytime you needed either of those things, you would just get the singleton and use it directly. Uh, more assertions now have been added where uh, when you retrieve these uh, objects to ensure that thread boundaries uh, are not crossed. Uh, and gradually this path uh, of use of that required these singletons was augmented to allow passing specific uh, references to font to, to, speci uh, to specific font caches and CSS value pools. Uh, at that point, the problem became adding a CSS value pool and font cache to work with threads. Uh, font cache, much like CSS value pool, is a frequently used piece of code, so it's decided that having separate caches per thread made more sense than making them thread safe and slowing down the majority use case. Uh, yeah, so adding a CSS value pool to work threads was trivial, but adding a font cache also meant refactoring the loading to allow it to be initiated both without a document and off the main thread. So font loading on workers happens uh, in much the same way as worker script loading, where requests are marshaled to the main thread. And once this was implemented, fonts were now usable off of the main thread, completing, for the most part, the implementation, uh, as you can see here. This only applies for GTK and WPE for now, uh, as the specific behavior of both Canvas implementation and font loading on those platforms means that they're safe to use in isolation from any thread. But this may or may not be, be the case for other platforms, which need individual integration efforts and testing. Uh, the code can be enabled and should compile on all platforms, uh, but the off-main thread portion remains untested on non-Linux platforms. Okay, so uh, with all that said, it's nice to finish off with a demo. 
Uh, so let's switch over. So uh, I've written this Mandelbro fractal renderer. Uh, even on a modern machine, rendering a fractal like this uh, at this resolution on a single thread doesn't work at interactive speeds. Uh, as you know, if I try and drag it around, you can kind of see <laughs> how long it takes to render. Uh, it's not quick. As I'm, as I'm, as my cursor is moving around, I'm trying to drag it, but it takes a long time for it to respond, as you can see. Um, so something uh, we can do with off-screen canvas and with workers uh, is we can offload this onto uh, onto off-screen canvas onto a worker thread, and that allows us to at least keep the UI responsive. Um, so now you can see that I can drag it around. And while the rendering speed hasn't increased, uh, the interactivity of the of the interface is now uh, as where you might expect. You know, it responds instantly to me dragging things around, and it catches up as it can. But this is a forty core machine, uh, so there's no real reason to stop at a single thread. So if I up the number of workers to match the number of cores that I have. Uh, we can suddenly make exploring and modifying this fractal an interactive task. So as you can see now, just as interactive, but it's actually rendering pretty fast. And my microphone's probably not picking up, but the fans are now starting to whir a bit faster on my machine as well. <laughs> and this this completely changes things. So now we can entertain uh, entertain the idea of you know interactively exploring this fractal, uh, which is just not possible. Uh, either with no threads or even with one thread. And we can even explore the idea of animating it, for example. Uh, so let's, uh, let's uh, animate a few of these properties. Yeah, and that's just uh, not something something that just wasn't possible for before. Uh, there's still some unnecessary overhead when using off-screen canvas uh, in WebKit uh, that would improve the frame rate here, which already isn't too bad. Uh, but even at this early stage, uh, I think it's pretty plain to see the potential. Uh, and here's hoping that we see some some adoption and we can improve the implementation over the coming years. So yeah, thanks for listening. <laughs>